The story of the game shows the perspective of someone who suffers from social anxiety and the possible problems they face on a daily basis, which is visualized in a detailed and horrifying manner, not because of any scary imagery, but because of how someone can be trapped inside their own mind, being stuck in a loop. Hi folks, I'm R, and welcome to the video. If you want videos like this covered in the next videos, make sure to suggest them to me on Twitter. This video will have spoilers ahead. With that said, let's begin. The protagonist of the story bids her mom goodbye and leaves to buy some milk at the local grocery store. Right from the start, it becomes clear that the girl suffers from social anxiety, trying to form and prepare her words when entering the store. She starts to imagine being a game character of a visual novel, projecting her thoughts on the screen and analyzing the options she has for speaking and actions, all in hope of making interactions easier and more bearable. Going through a lengthy internal conversation with herself, imagining a whole new world in her head, she overanalyzes her words and sentences, trying to perfect her vocabulary, grammar, enunciation, and cadence, ending up being scrutinized heavily by herself. Moving through the streets, the protagonist even overanalyzes where she steps, being too hard on herself. Sometime later, she encounters an entity only real in the darkest of imaginations, where it obstructs the protagonist, repeating the letter O over and over again. The protagonist talking to herself, having an imaginary entity seemingly on her side, the entity asks what is going on, to which the protagonist explains that the horrid creature obstructing her possibly wants to scare her, as she is terrified by the letter O, where she telepathically shows why she is so afraid of it, displaying an image of absolute void and emptiness, a place where everything gets sucked into emotions, personalities, livelihood, and a lot more. The entity being inside the protagonist's mind fully understands her when she gets the courage to repeat the letter O, which makes the trolling obnoxious creature disappear, when the inner entity within the protagonist congratulates her and mentions that she should do it more often. In other words, encouraging her to face her fears more frequently, as that's the only way she could truly move on. Managing to enter the store after some time, the protagonist reaches the shelves filled with a variety of milk brands and types. Stressing out on what to do and getting easily distracted by the horrors of what awaits her, she goes through her options and what she needs to do. That's when the other entity within her mind provides her with different options, stating the obvious that she needs to get a bag of milk and go to the cashier in order to purchase it. A tasking mission which terrifies the protagonist, who gets distracted by the play on words about milk being inside a bag of milk. Facing the cashier nervously, seeing them as an extraterrestrial entity with confusing way of communication, not clearly stating what they want, the protagonist stresses out and asks for milk despite having one bag in her hand. After giving the cashier the milk and asking for it back, the cashier refuses to give back the milk, saying that he wants more, which makes the protagonist having a breakdown, begging him for the milk as her mother would get furious if she goes back empty-handed without the milk. The entity within her mind points out that the cashier requires money for the milk when everything starts to make sense. The protagonist gives the money to the cashier, who gives the bag of milk, placing it inside a shopping bag. This portrays how the protagonist is boxed within her own mind, struggling to understand common communication methods such as facial expressions and unspoken communication ways. She possibly even blocked out majority of what the cashier said as a form of defense mechanism, hence why she barely understood him. The protagonist taking the bag of milk inside a bag with her, she starts to get immersed in her vivid imagination when she accidentally mentions the pills she's taking might not be as effective as she thinks they are. The entity being concerned asks if she's experiencing these events due to the pills, which makes the protagonist act defensive that they're nothing to do with the pills and she's absolutely fine. The protagonist refusing the obvious that she has a creative imagination stays adamant when the voice inside her mind stops talking, let her believe whatever she wants to. 
The protagonist immerses herself deeper in her imagination, despite the voice pointing out that it wouldn't be good for her mental health recovery. Avoiding the truth, nonetheless, she tries to create a world where she's a visual novel game character, breaking the fourth wall and communicating with whoever is playing the game. She travels into the depth of her mind in an alternate visual novel where she is present in an overused cliche of a place, a place with a bench. Communicating with the player, the protagonist continues that the medicine she uses are becoming less and less effective, and despite talking to an imaginary character, being the player in a visual novel of a game she has centered around herself and life, being its protagonist, she explains how her condition has slowly affected her communication skills, verbally, written, and even expression-wise. She explains that although her condition is part of her life and affects her severely, she doesn't want to be identified with that, wanting the player to know her as she is. She then carries on explaining that she doesn't want the player to ask too many questions and just wants someone to listen to her. Even if an imaginary character, as she clearly desperately longs for someone to just listen to her without constant criticism and guidance to how to live her life and being constantly reminded of her problems and diagnosis. She further explains a life-changing event caused her to start seeing the world in red color, something that she is well adjusted to or simply indifferent to now. The protagonist continues that she doesn't want the character she's speaking to to ask her what the event was, as she's not comfortable talking about it. It's something that she clearly hasn't fully moved on from. Something that she has unexplainable mixed feelings about, desperately wanting to console with someone about it, and at the same time, wanting to keep it a secret. The protagonist then explains it's all silly, talking to an imaginary character, but confesses that no matter what, sooner or later, she will raise the topic once more, wanting to desperately talk about the event. So maybe, just maybe, she can find a way to move on and find comfort. She displays an unrecognizable image being all mangled up, asking the player to guess what it is. The protagonist in a monotone manner, trying very hard not to expose herself to vulnerability, explains that it's her dad, or at least parts of him, who jumped out of a window some time ago, visibly being upset and shaken, but trying to brush it off, as if she wants someone's shoulder to just cry on non-stop. The protagonist then mentions that it's the first time for a very long time that she has managed to go out without a serious incident happening. Thanking the smooth purchase partially to the pills she's taking, yet giving majority of the credit to the player who helped her create her own visual novel, being assisted when making her decisions. As the protagonist is deep in conversation with her imaginary friend, someone who understands her and shows actual interest in her life, the other entity, being the voice of wisdom and reality, pushing the protagonist to face reality, comes into the mix, instructing her to go back home instead of living in her imaginary world. Before going back to the real world, she asks the player to accompany her when she reaches her apartment building. She explains how this is a day-to-day -day ritual, repeating every day as if it's all just on loop. She then reveals that she has been trying many different pills, which all are as ineffective as as the last, with the voice of wisdom, the entity within her mind being no other than the current pill she's taking. That's why at one point if the pill insists on the protagonist facing reality, she simply mentions that her pill is too pushy and ineffective, intending to discard it and just get another type. Therefore, everything she experienced was nothing but her vast imagination, creating a visual novel in her head, an entity giving her real value advice, encouraging her to live in reality, face her fears and function with ease, a representation of part of her mind being affected by the pills she's taking, or simply being the pills. And finally, the imaginary player showing interest in her life and assisting her to overcome certain situations. And the monsters she faced in the street and the supermarket were real people who have become terrifying to her, uttering words and sentences that she doesn't understand. This displays how due to the severe mental strains she suffers from, she finds it difficult to communicate with people. There might be many more medical diagnoses than just social anxiety as she has a deep imagination 
voices and characters in our mind that seem very real, low self-esteem and seemingly deep sadness, but I'll leave that up to you folks to discuss in the comment section. She eventually reaches home with her mother interrogating her in a way as if she is tired with her, if she bought milk or not, not even responding to her when the protagonist says hello. As the protagonist explains that she bought milk, the mother orders her to go to her bed as if she has enough of her. The mother at first might seem like a monster who doesn't understand her daughter and wants to see her suffer, and the truth is, she probably just doesn't understand her. The fact is that the mother lost her husband, someone who she shared a life with, keeping all her secrets with, someone that was always there when she needed someone, therefore, the mother could very likely suffer from mental health issues herself. Something that isn't shown in the story as it's depicted through the perspective of the protagonist. It seems like the mother has too many suppressed emotions, dumping some on her daughter whether intentionally or unintentionally. She clearly has too many monsters herself to be able to be a shoulder to cry on for her daughter. At the same time, not fully understanding her, she tries to push her overcome her fear of social interaction by asking her with simple shopping trips. Unfortunately, she comes across very demanding and tyrannical, which usually doesn't help with social anxiety and makes one feel even worse and useless. There's a much longer sequel to this game which apparently expands on the story a lot more. I'm looking forward to analyze it and make a subsequent video about it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to stay tuned by hitting the subscribe button. It's been your host Star, and I will see you on the next one.